Hi, I'm Robert here at Render, and in this video we'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to create your first project using the Optic Portable Laser Cutter. For this, you'll need to make sure you have set up your Optic and installed Lightburn. If you haven't done so, please see the links in the description to watch those videos and come back to this video when you're ready. You will also need the black aluminum card, the orange test pieces along with the Hello World test card we sent to you with your Optic. Now that you have everything, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do, if you haven't already, is download the Hello World project file. Once you've done so, go ahead and open the file in Lightburn. When the project file opens, you'll see that some pre-made elements we at Render designed in the main workspace. If you look over the Cuts and Layers menu here on the right, you can see further details as the individual speeds and powers for each layer. Now that the file is open, we'll want to take a closer look at the file. Lightburn has many ways to zoom in and out, along with navigating the workspace. For this example, click on the red rectangular layer and click the Zoom to Frame Selection button. As you can more closely see, many elements are set to a particular color layer, and each layer is specifically calibrated for the intended effect. The next step is to customize this project by adding your name to the design. Make sure nothing is selected by clicking anywhere in the workspace. Move your cursor down to the color palette menu on the bottom left side of the page and click on C09. You'll see in the cuts layer menu, the C09 layer will be positioned above the C06, which is the light blue layer. This is where we'll want it to be when we laser cut in a bit. Next, move your cursor to the creation tools menu on the left side toolbar. Click the Create Edit Text tool. Move your cursor to the workspace and click on the window to begin typing out your name. Once your name is typed out, we'll want to position it. Click on the layer and make sure it is selected. Now you can manually adjust and position the text by using the handles, which are the small squares surrounding the selected layer, as you may find in any other editing application, or you can input the values in the main menu at the top, which I'll walk you through. Move your cursor to the top and locate and click on the height selection. Change this value to be 0.1223 inches or 3.11 millimeters. This will correct the size of the name. Next, go to the rotate selection and change the value to 180 degrees. This will flip your name upside down. And finally, we'll need to position the text into the proper location. Over in the X position and Y position selection area at the top of the window, Type in 1.8089 inches or 44.269 millimeters for the X position and 3.6830 or 93.655 millimeters for the Y position. If everything is correct, your name should be adjusted and placed right where my name is currently shown. If you need to adjust further, use any of the tools shown to do so. Once your name has been placed, we'll want to move our attention to the Cuts and Layers menu where we can check our settings by either looking down in the table below or double clicking the layer to open up the Cut Settings Editor. Make sure your settings match what I have shown on the screen and that your layer is still set to C09. Let's go ahead and preview this project by moving our cursor up to the top of the window and clicking on the icon that's shaped like a TV. This is your preview button. And when you click on it, the preview window will open and we'll be able to see the final project. Also, this window allows us to see the duration it will take to cut out and engrave this project, along with being able to scroll through to see how it will actually cut out from start to finish. As you can see, the project starts at the bottom and moves to the top, then finishes by cutting out the layers at the end. This is done by the order of the layers we have shown in the Cuts and Layers menu. If you have multiple colored layers, the top layer will be done first and proceed down until it finishes with the last. With that, go ahead and close the preview window by clicking OK. Now that we have our project ready in Lightburn, we need to prep our material and calibrate the optic. The first step is to take an orange test card and place it over the black aluminum card we gave you. Place both on the cutting mat so the corner lines up one inch on the X and one inch on the Y axis. You'll notice it doesn't quite match up with where we have the project positioned in Lightburn. We did this on purpose so that the project has some clearance on all sides to cut out the design without the layer going off the cut area and accidentally scoring the cutting mat itself. The next step is to set up the laser module height. Bring the upper body forward so the laser module can be positioned just above the orange material. Slide the laser module over if needed. Take out the height gauge and orient it so that the tallest setting, which is the engraving height, is set onto the orange material. 
holding the laser module, slide the cam lever slowly up until the laser module can freely move on the back plate. Lower the module so the base sits on top of the height gauge. Holding the height gauge in place, lower the cam lever back down to lock it. Place the shield back into place and check that your material is still properly placed on the cutting mat. Now that we have our material and optic prepped and our LiPro file set up, let's get power and data connection established. Press the power button, switching the button from a solid orange to a solid blue which engages the optics drivers and is now in standby to laser cut. Home your laser by pressing the home button in the laser control menu. This will instruct LiPurn where your starting position is before cutting. Next, we'll want to frame the project file to double check that everything is in place. Before we do so, we'll want to make sure that we're being safe at this time by putting on our laser safety glasses. Now, to frame this project, switch tabs from Cuts Layer to Console and click Fan Laser Enable. At this point, the fans will turn on, and with the fans on, toggle to the Move tab. Make sure that the speed is set to 30 millimeters per second and the power is set to 0.02%. Switch back to the Cuts Layer tab, and with the fans turned on and the optic homed, click Frame. The optic will outline the cutting area to guarantee your material is positioned correctly. Once you've done so, go back to the console tab and turn off the fans by clicking fan laser disable or press the stop button. Now that we've done all of our prep work and ran our checks, we're ready to laser cut our project out. Go ahead and hone the optic again and when you're ready, click start in the laser control menu. Your optics power button will switch to a pulsing green, the internal exhaust fans will power on and the laser will start to fire. At this time, I would like to remind everyone to always stay vigilant when the laser cutter is running. If you need to walk away from the laser, you can always pause the optic by clicking pause and light burn, and when you return, press the resume button once again to continue. If an issue occurs, press the stop button to halt all further actions so you can fix the problem before continuing, or you can press the power button on your optic. Make sure you're being safe. Remember to wear your laser safety glasses whenever the optic is running. Make sure if others are in the area to have them put on safety glasses as well. Or block the laser with something so no one can see it until the optic is finished running. When the optic has finished its cut and the exhaust fans have completely turned off, the power button will switch back to a solid blue signaling it is safe to proceed and you can remove your safety glasses. Press the power button to switch the laser from blue to a solid orange, which will disengage the drivers and allow you to move the upper chassis out of the way. And with that, we've done it. Let's take a look at the final result. We should have an exact duplicate of the Hello World car we sent you, only with your name now laser engraved on the surface. This project demonstrates the use of vector cutting and scoring along with raster engraving and how using different speeds and powers can have a different effect on your materials. As we can see here, the gradient shifts from a darker to a lighter color, which is also dependent on the section of speeds and powers we used. If you'd like to learn more about Lightburn and its settings, take a look at Lightburn's website for further instructions and tutorials. And if you liked this video and want to see more projects, tutorials, tips and techniques made with the optic, definitely like and subscribe to the Render channel so you never miss a video. If you have any questions, please contact us at hello at render.com and with that, Congratulations on successfully completing your first project with the Optic Portable Laser Cutter. Definitely send us a selfie with your Hello World cuts as we would love to see and share them with current and future users and subscribers. Have fun with your future projects and we'll see you in the next video.